hostiles. 12 o'clock is six miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Now, over here, we have a place in Florida called the Fort Matanzas National Monument. It's not far from me, but the reason I'm here is that I've made the allegation in the past that if there were a civilization down here that was seafaring, they would have needed to have something akin to an intracoastal waterway. Of course, larger ships being docked out at sea, once they reach shallow water, have to take their goods and put it on smaller ships and then traverse the rivers to get access to the mainland, to the, to the continent, the interior. And you can see this, all coastal states have this, from the Carolinas, basically the entire coast, all the way down here. Now, the reason I start here is that, well, A, I live here, and B, this is how the Spanish controlled this area militarily for hundreds and hundreds of years. Florida wasn't even part of the U.S. Revolution and maintained Spanish um, dominance and control all the way up to the Civil War. This is, of course, the north side inlet right here, and this is St. Augustine itself proper. And by controlling these two inlets with military posts, the Spanish basically controlled most of this region of Florida. One of the things that they used, let's see if I can find it here, to do so is the first masonry fort in the Americas built by anyone. It's called the Castillo de San Marco. It's basically just a tourist trap these days, but it's still there for a good reason. 500, nearly 500 years later. It has to do with what they built it out of and its location. So between there and Fort Matanzas, they control the intracoastal waterway of Florida. Jacksonville was a place called Fort Caroline, and it was controlled by the French. Now, the reason I mention that is it's important because I want to show you guys something. As we zoom in here, this is Naval Station Mayport. As you can see, here's the natural inlet for the St. John's River. 
and they've created this artificial port. And this is where carriers, destroyers, all sorts of things are docked. Now, this is, of course, the Google Earth web-based. We're going to go real quick to a place we've been before. One second. All right, now I've I've kind of poorly labeled this hidden ships. It's more like hidden islands. When you go to this part of Antarctica, and I'll zoom out real quick, there's a part where this strange canal is cut that goes right into the inlet here, into the Arctic Circle. Just so everybody has a frame of reference, we're down here. If this is, of course, 12 o'clock, this is 6 o'clock. What we're going to do is instead of look at this straight down, we're going to use this technique that I've tried to show before, where you tilt the angle up as if you're looking at the horizon. And like I said, these are more than likely islands, not ships. It was just a... You know, when I first found this, I just labeled it the first thing that came to mind. We're going to go clockwise along the coast here and see if we can find evidence of something like an intracoastal waterway. And as we do so, strange things will start to appear. The first thing we come along is this. The farther we go, we start to see stuff like this, which is very clearly. Now, to give you guys some scale here, this is about three miles long, this artificial port here. And you can see that there's even a smaller port right here. But this is where it really starts to get interesting. We start to see these smaller islands, and we also start to see submerged ones as well. And what looks like evidence of inlets and an intracoastal waterway system, where of course they would have conducted trade. And out here we can see evidence of other very suspiciously shaped islands as well perfectly rectangular. I mean, this very much looks like, and the reason I showed you Mayport, these, this looks like ship docks. And places where larger craft and larger ships, seafaring ships, would have come to drop their goods off. Another submerged one here. Here we see two rectangular ones, another level, and basically one, two, three levels of canal here. And here, I mean, this looks like, this straight up looks like a port. We have a major island here with what looks like some type of a port structure here. This looks like places where ships could have come and just swung around and you know, burped up and unloaded and then left. And like I said, at one time, the water level might have been very, very different. It's very, very, as we zoom out here, very reminiscent of what looks like an intracoastal waterway. And as we zoom out farther here, we can see the submerged deep water channels that larger ships would have necessarily needed. Here it's very, very apparent. 
very shallow water, very deep water. And this was described in antiquity, I believe, by Plato. I mean, especially here. I mean, you can see very clearly that this, at one time, this was above water. These are deep water channels that show that more than likely this was a very advanced seafaring civilization. Now, as we come around here, we're going to stop here. Just to give you guys an example right here, this is seven miles long, this channel here. And this is about two miles. And it's half a mile wide, so this isn't an icebreaker that did this. And I'm going to show you historically, we're going to try to get the time slider up here, that this doesn't change in time. Now, as we can see, this is very circular, very suspiciously shaped. And then we have, of course, this channel access to it. Now, naysayers would say that this is just a glacier. Well, glaciers are what? They're made of ice. You would think over time, the shape of this, especially out here, would change. Well, let's go back through time and let's see what we see. 2011, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So we're back eight years. The channel's identical, the shape is identical, Everything around it has changed, and I could take you other places in Antarctica where you wouldn't even recognize it. It's changed so much from 2004 to 2012. Very clearly, an artificial structure. And once again, you won't find this unless you use a lot of different techniques. One is time. Another one is the layers, of course, that uncover in different detail, and perspective seeing things from a very different angle other than straight above because, and I'll show this again, this is very easy to see from this angle, but if I tilt down, which is what a lot of people do, they take the default view of straight down, and I zoom up, the channel itself disappears. You can't even see it. It's gone. And all those structures that we just saw along the coast, all gone. Can't see anything. Completely hidden. And this is what they're counting on. This is exactly what they're counting on. People not taking the time to look at this closely. Because it's kind of hard to see, but down here in the lower right-hand corner, it starts to uncover a little bit. But the farther you go, the more it, it covers up. And like I said, this is an incredibly close zoom rate even here. This is usually where people stop when they start to look for stuff that's strange. So anyway, 16 and a half minutes, I guess that's uh, probably more than we normally go. But it's, uh, it's a very odd thing to see things that remind you of structures and places that you see in modern times. So I think this is just another piece to the puzzle that shows that at one time we had a very, very advanced seafaring uh, civilization that lived here, and as this ice melts, there was a story out that uh, I forget how many trillions of tons of ice that Antarctica has lost in the last 25 years. We're going to start to see more and more and more of this. And it would probably explain why the Chileans are modernizing their Antarctic bases, because there's probably a lot of things down here that no human eye has seen in thousands of years. So, anyway, thank you guys so much for the support. I appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, 
Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot style. 12 o'clock is six miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Chris and Kane. Isn't the Landesite off-world, sir?